welcome back everyone i pray you're all doing well and i hope that at least for those of you living in the southeast wisconsin area you're taking a little bit of time to enjoy this gorgeous day today our profiles in faith move us from joseph to moses i haven't decided yet but we may actually spend a couple days with moses i'm not entirely sure so you'll have to come back tomorrow to figure that out but for today i want to start with the early portion of moses's story this will be a familiar tale to many of you and it comes from exodus 3. Exodus tells us that Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of the Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. Moses looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. And then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why this bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmaster, taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign for you that it is I who sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt. You shall worship God on this mountain. Now this, this devotion today is for my mother, who's been watching these reflections from Michigan, because I know she would want me to tell you about the yeah buts. Some of you have heard me talk about this before, but... I'm one of those people who tends to lie in bed with my mind racing over one thing or another. And as a teen, that would often lead to some late night conversations with my mother. I'd be lying in bed embroiled in teenaged angst regarding one dilemma or another. I'd hear my mother in the hall, I'd call out to her and I'd start rattle, rattling and railing on about whatever unsolvable problem was on my mind. She'd make a suggestion, and I'd say, yeah, but she'd make another, and my response would be the same, yeah, but, and this would go on in that circle for a while until I had unloaded enough to rest, and my mother would head out, and I'd go to sleep. These conversations became known as I grew older as the Yabbats, and in a lot of ways, that's exactly what unfolds in the third and fourth chapter of Exodus with Moses. It starts in that 11th verse of chapter 13 that we read. God calls Moses to lead the people, and Moses replies, Yeah, but who am I to do this? 
God says, I will be with you. In the 13th verse, Moses comes right back. Yeah, but but they're going to ask me who sent me, and I don't have anything to tell them. I am, I am who I am, God says. Tell them the Lord of your ancestors has sent you to them. Yeah, but we're jumping ahead to the beginning of the fourth chapter now. What if they don't believe me? See that staff in your hand, God says, throw it on the ground. And it becomes a snake. Put your hand in your cloak and it will appear leprous. Do it again and it will heal. Pour some water from the Nile on the ground and it will pour out as blood. Yeah, but... This just keeps going as Moses points his to his lack of eloquence and his impediment in speech. And God reminds us that that he will God reminds Moses that he will be there along the way. And then Moses actually goes to the point of begging God to send someone else. And God agrees to allow Aaron to be Moses Moses' voice box but still pushes for Moses to go. And finally, Moses relents and heads down that path on which God was sending him. Now, my reason for going through all of this story is that I think it's an invaluable reminder of the fundamental promise that when we are not enough, when we don't have enough, when our strength is not enough, when our capacity is not enough, God is. Those late night yeah but conversations that I used to share with my mother were admittedly in some ways a reflection of the fact that I simply wasn't ready to hear anything at the time, but but they were also a reflection of my capacity, much like we see in Moses here, to simply shoot holes in every solution that was offered and to argue my way into being convinced that there was no way out of my predicament of the moment. What we see with Moses in that exact dialogue, however, is the impenetrable response of God. You don't know who I am? I am your God. You don't think you can do it? I'll do it with you. You don't believe you have what it takes? I'll give you what it takes. This banter between Moses and God reflects at its core the promises of God that when we are not enough, when we don't have enough, when our strength is not enough, when our capacity is not enough, God is. And the story that unfolds for Moses and the Israelites after this point is the storybook, storybook proof of the fact that even when we aren't enough on our own, in God, we are. God is enough. In any time of trial, in any circumstance of strife, certainly in the midst of all we know in our world today, it's not hard for us to come face to face with the reality that we sometimes aren't enough. God is. And Moses reminds us that in God, so are we. Let's pray together. God of our ancestors, of generations past and those still yet to come, we rest in awe of your work, your strength, your power, and your peace in our lives. Help us, God, to lean into you when we face our weakness. Help us to turn you to you to be our stay when our foundations are rocked. Help us, God, to find the peace of the promise that in every place we are not enough. You are. 
and that in you, so are we. We praise you for that promise, God. We rest in that hope. And we pray this in the name of your Son. Amen. If you haven't yet, go out and enjoy this beautiful day for those of you who are here in Southeast Michigan. Blessings to all of you, and I'll see you tomorrow.